this video we will try to derive the formula for virtual loss of gm during critical period in a dry dock there are two methods one method is p into km upon w is is the virtual loss of gm where meta center is shifting towards the center of gravity and another method is p into kg upon w minus p both methods are acceptable let's see how they are derived both of them will calculate virtual loss of gm during critical period so as you can see this diagram is exaggerated a bit the heel is exaggerated just to make it clearer and uh, <coughs> and uh, you know, understandable so here you can see in method 1 once the stern or the the part of the ship which first touches the uh, keel blocks usually it's the stern has touched the keel block from and the water levels is dropping in the dock three forces are acting one is the up thrust of the keel block also called reaction force which is acting at the bottom of the ship's uh, um, hull which is a keel plate and it is acting upwards it is a reaction force so it's marked here as force p acting at the bottom of the ship from the keel blocks vertically upwards then ships weight total weight of the ships which is acting downwards from center of gravity g then we have the remainder force is w minus p which is the buoyancy force so the total weight is w out of uh, uh, this in some weight which is now supported by keel blocks because of falling water so remaining weight of the ship is still supported by the buoyancy at reduced uh, underwater volume so that is w minus p okay and it is acting upward also so let's focus on two forces p which is the up thrust force and w minus p which is a buoyancy force both are acting vertically upwards and parallel to each other so their resultant of their two forces will be p plus w minus p equals to w so this is the resultant of these two forces and uh, it is equal to the ship's weight w so we have now where will be the resultant resultant will be because both are acting in the same direction p and w minus p resultant will be somewhere between the two forces and closer to the bigger force which is w minus p so here the resultant has been shown with broken line and its value is equal to w weight of the ship so we have weight of the ship acting downwards from center of gravity g and is being supported by a resultant weight of two forces acting upward and this resultant force is meeting the center line of the ship at a point we call that m1 okay so the center of buoyancy which is meeting at m the and uh, m1 is the resultant resultant of p and w minus p so it appears that the matter center has shifted downward towards center of gravity and the new matter center is a m1 this is a virtual effect of these two forces so since uh, uh, this is a resultant force we can as per laws of law of resultant if we take the moments from force p to the resultant and distance is x then p into x is the moment of force p it should be equal to w minus p 
into y. y is the distance of the buoyancy, remaining buoyancy force from the resultant. Because it's a resultant, so both moments must be equal. So P into x must be equal to W minus P into y. What is x now? So if you see this uh, <coughs> triangle which is comprising of uh, this uh, Km1 and it is uh, the distance is x, a small triangle. You see the angle of heel is theta. So x upon Km1 will be sine theta. So x upon Km1, K is the keel here, will be sin theta. So x will be Km1 sin theta. Similarly here you can see y, if you see the triangle, small triangle here for the y, then y will be equal to mm, see if you say y upon mm1 will be sin theta. In the small triangle here, y upon mm1 is sin theta. So y is equal to mm1 sin theta. So w minus p into y, we write mm1 sin theta. Sin theta, sin theta cancels. And uh, we have p into km1 equals to, if you open the bracket, w into mm1 minus p into mm1. Okay, rearranging, you get P common, you have Km1 plus Mm1 in the bracket and equals to W into Mm1. Km1 plus Mm1 is nothing but Km. So the formula becomes P into Km upon W equals to Mm1. So this Mm1 is nothing but virtual loss of gm okay before the gm was before it was gm now it is gm1 so mm1 is the virtual loss in the gm and now if you want to know the we want to know the writing moment so so writing moment is gz so if i plot the uh, if i plot the gz lever on the resultant that will be the gz now so and and the gz is nothing but in this case it will be now gm1 sin theta so gm1 is the new virtual gm so relative writing moment is equal to W, the original displacement into GM1 sin theta. With GM1 is the virtual GM. So from from the from the GM you subtract the loss of GM MM1. You will get the virtual GM. And W used is the original displacement when she was floating. So now let's see the method 2 where we have now in in the method 2 we focus on two forces with one is force p thrust and one is the shifts the weight acting downwards from center of gravity g so upward force is acting upward shifts weight is acting downward from g so what will be the resultant This is a W. So we are now taking the resultant of the shift's weight acting from G downward and the thrust force P acting upward. Now these two are parallel forces but they are unlike in nature. One is acting upward, one is acting downward. So the resultant will be somewhere outside here, closer to, towards closer to the bigger force which is W. So again resultant is marked by broken line. Okay, that is uh, uh, 
W minus P. Now we have got two forces. One is the W minus P acting downward through G1 and W minus P acting upward through M. So resultant of P and W which is W minus P. <coughs> so it seems that this air shift center of gravity has shifted upward to G1. So we have now two forces W minus P acting downward from G1, W minus P acting upward from center of buoyancy. So the GZ will be between these two W minus P and what will be the uh, in, in terms of uh, the small angles of field you can see that the it will be G1M sin theta. GZ will be G1, uh, G1M sin theta. So, same like if you now take moments from the four individual two forces P and W. We have distance Y from P force to the resultant and distance is X from the center of gravity which is acting downward to the resultant. So P into Y will be equal to W into X okay. as per law, law of uh, moments if you take the moments from the resultant which is W minus P then P into Y should be equal to W into X. So again, if you find the value of y, y will be kg1 sin theta. And x will be small as gg1 sin theta. So we are, we are talking about this small triangle here, which is gg1x. So you can see the value of x will be gg1 upon x is sin theta no, no sorry x upon gg1 is sin theta so x will be gg1 sin theta so we can put gg1 sin theta for x and for y it will be if you say kg1 sin theta so this is y So y upon y upon kg1 is sin theta in this triangle. So y will be kg1 sin theta. So if you solve this, then you get p into kg1 is w into gg1, and uh, <coughs> kg1 is nothing but kg plus gg1, which is equal to w into gg1. And you open P into KG plus P into GG1 is W into GG1 and then resolve P into KG is equal to GG1 and within bracket W minus P. So if you transpose this on the other side then W into GG1 minus P into GG1 will be W minus P into GG1 and GG1 will be equal to P into kg upon W minus P. So GG1 is the shift of the shift center of gravity upward. So it's towards the meta center. So whatever is GG1 is actually loss in the G. So before was GM, now it becomes before what it was GM and now it becomes G uh, G1M. So GG1 here is the loss and this is the knowledge we use that okay it's behaving as if some weight has been discharged from the keel plate and that has caused the center of gravity to move upward from G to G1. Because the water level is falling and uh, because water level is falling, so underwater volume is reducing 
this is causing a reduction in the buoyancy force so buoyancy force is reducing that means the ship's weight must go somewhere ship weight has to be then uh, supported so the weight is not changing so ship's weight is getting transferred to the keel blocks so whatever loss in buoyancy is taking place because of drop of water level that is getting transferred to the keel blocks and is supported by the up thrust force so here in the second method the writing moment w into gz will be w minus p this is the virtual displacement from actual displacement we subtract the up thrust force p so this is the virtual displacement at the reduced volume and the z will be g1z it will be g1m sin theta again g1m is the virtual gm so this is the gm here g1m and g1z so g1z will be g1m sin theta with that i hope that uh, is uh, interesting to know how this two formula we have derived for virtual loss of gm okay thank you very much